Hey guys, Gary McLaughlin here, and today I want to walk you through a very basic five exercise series looking at how to improve flexibility, specifically in the lower extremity, without static stretching. So one thing we have come to realize over the years is the static stretching can be important in some situations, but rather than focusing on just, just holding and hanging in these positions to try to elongate the muscle, um, what I've found is it's more beneficial to actually train the body how to move through these ranges of motion to really challenge that end range where that muscle is fully lengthened if you have a flexibility issue. So if you're someone that, depending on your daily, your activities of daily living, your sports, if you're a runner, um, play baseball, softball, whatever it is, making sure you have the flexibility necessary to get into the position to be successful within the activity or sport, um, but then also to develop good strength and control throughout that range of motion is more important than aimlessly just holding holding into a static stretch. So today I'm gonna to walk you through how to address specifically the quads and hip flexors, the hamstring, adductors, posterior fibers of this glute med, and then lastly, we'll take a trip down and look at some exercises for the calves. So the first muscle group when we're looking at improving flexibility at the lower extremity and what we're gonna to target today is the quad and hip flexors. So very simply, what we're trying to do with these exercises is put the muscles in a slightly shortened position and then elongate throughout the range of motion so we're putting them on a slight stretch position. So two exercises that come to mind for the quad and the hip flexors, it's the split squat and the rear foot elevated split squat. Obviously always recommend starting with the easier variation and then progressing from there as you develop more range of motion. But then also with exercises like this, a little more balance and stability as well since um, they are in a split stance position. So the split squat exercise, all you're gonna do here is split stance, so think lunge stance, but stationary. In this position, this back leg is more extended. So from here, that's how we get into position as I lower down to stretch these hip flexors and that quad. All I'm gonna simply do here is I'm gonna lower down, I'm gonna bend my knee. As that knee bends, hips into a little degree of extension, we start to elongate throughout that quad muscle. I'm gonna lower down as far as I can comfortably get, and I'm gonna push off that front leg to come back up. So very common exercise. I know a lot of people are performing lunges within their program, but very good to throw in if you're doing any kind of self myofascial release, static stretching, uh, to take that last step to work on elongating that muscle throughout its range of motion during some kind of movement. Okay, so obviously I would work on that both sides, or if I only had a strict restriction on one side, focusing on that one side, um, at, kind of by itself, just because I wanna make sure I'm balanced from, from left to right. Next progression on that, and to further elongate quad and hip flexor, is what's called the rear foot elevated split squat. So in this position, what I like to do here is, from the regular split squat, just simply place the back foot up on the bench, okay? All that's going to do is going to further flex the knee to stretch the quad, rectus femoris, some of those hip, hip flexor muscles. So if I'm up here on the bench, simply going to lower down, and as you can see there, greater degree of knee flexion, which provides more of a stretch or elongation throughout that. So obviously, we would work on the regular split squat first, be able to master that, add some resistance to it before going to the rear foot elevated, just because it's such a greater demand on balance and stability, but you'll get a much bigger stretch when it comes to the quad and hip flexors on that one. The next muscle group we're gonna target are the hamstrings. And hamstrings are these four muscles down the back side of the thigh, can attach up here at the hip, and then go down, attach to the femur, and also just lower below the knee. So again, typically this is one of those big areas that you see a lot of people kind of just hanging down in that typical hamstring stretch or kicking the leg up here. Again, very static, not moving throughout a range of motion, but just holding at that end range. What I found, especially personally, to be more beneficial are what's called the Romanian deadlift and the offset Romanian deadlift. So what you're gonna do here in these exercises, and I definitely recommend, and starting without weight, try to build a little bit more flexibility throughout the range of motion with good posture and form, and then add some kind of resistance to it. So simply from here, feet about hip width apart, small bend in the knees, hip hinge back as I lower down. So very similar to that standard toe touch or forward fold, depending what you wanna call that. But now just actively sitting down, sitting back into the hips and then coming back up, driving through the glutes, okay? So just going through that motion, 10, 20 repetitions, doing that a couple times a day to place those hamstring muscles in a slightly stretched position, okay? That's the first step. Next thing we can do on top of that exercise 
add some dumbbells, add a barbell. Once we start to build and improve that range of motion, start to really increase strength throughout that range of motion as well. I think that's one thing uh, people typically miss. We look for range of motion by itself, but we need to build a little bit of strength throughout that range of motion to help prevent some of that tightness and things to come back just from overdoing it during our daily activities. Next step on this one to further progress it, this offset position. So what we're actually targeting here is the forward leg more so than the back leg. The movement itself doesn't change one bit. So as my leg is forward, I'm already in a greater degree of flexion. So as I get back and come into flexion here more so, I'm feeling a greater stretch throughout that front hamstring. And then I'm going to drive the hips forward. Okay, so just to show you in the leg closest to the camera, front foot slightly forward. You can see it's still a little bit of overlap on the shoes. I'm not really stepping forward here. I wanna be still within this small base. Um, and then from there, small bend of the knees, hinging, coming forward. So as I get down to the bottom, big stretch throughout the hamstrings and then driving the hips forward, okay? So those are two movements on how to improve hamstring flexibility without static stretching. Next muscle group we're going to target are what's called the adductors. Adductors make up this groin kind of compartment here on the thigh, right on this medial side here from the pelvis going down into the leg and even just slightly past the knee joint. So what we need to do when we target the adductors, where it's, it's a pretty hidden area, a lot of people don't notice this um, because we're not doing a lot of movement side to side. A lot of what we do, especially as we age, is more forward and back. So um, you really would notice this more if you are a, a tennis player or a, an athlete that's really working or partaking in change of direction sports. But what we're gonna do with the lateral, with the adductors is what's called the lateral squat. I always like to start assisted when it comes to this exercise because a lot of people really have trouble getting down into this motion. Um, it's, it's very foreign to a lot of people. So we can do this a couple different ways. We can hold TRX and assist back into the position or simply if you're at home, holding on to the door jam, doorknob, uh, I mean, even a, a table or a countertop. Some, sometimes I like to have people kind of hold right into the sink just to give them a little bit of support to sit back. So what we're gonna do here in this assisted version is, you're gonna see, I'm gonna set my feet off slightly offset. My right foot is forward, my left foot is back. So I'm gonna lower down to my right side. I'm just gonna hold on lightly because I'm gonna use this rail here or whatever you have at home to help myself sit back into the hips and lower myself down. Because as I get lower down, I start to get a little bit more elongation throughout this straight leg mostly, but you'll also get some through that bent leg as well, this the direction you're going. So I would just work on sitting down nice and slowly into that hip, butt goes back, knee goes over shoelaces, and just focus on getting down close to parallel or just off from parallel. Again, we don't need to be all the way down there, but just comfortably getting into that position. And then obviously from there, working on that other side as well, lowering down and coming up. This is one I typically see a lot of people have a, a somewhat of a difference or noticeable difference from side to side. So if you do have that difference, I want you to go ahead and add one extra set into that tighter side just to make sure we're balancing from left to right. So from there, once you get that down, we wanna go unassisted. Um, again, a lot of the movements we do on a daily basis, we're not holding on to things. So building flexibility in a more of a assisted or somewhat supported position is the starting point, but we need to teach the body how to get into those positions without any external support. So all I would do in that situation is lateral squat again, not holding on to anything. So by now, hopefully I've improved some range of motion. I can get lower. I'm not gonna immediately jump right into this one. I'm gonna get into the same exact position. Nothing changes, I'm just not holding on. And then from there, arms out in front just slightly, butt back, lower into it, and I'm just gonna push back up. So I'm sinking into that stretch or elongated position, those adductor muscles through the inner thigh here, getting down nice and low, and then back up. You'll notice going from assisted to here is very challenging. You're gonna notice a little bit of a drop or a, a reduction in flexibility. It's a harder position to get into unassisted, but something you just have to work at day after day in addition to any kind of just traditional groin stretching, okay? So that's how you work on improving flexibility at the adductors without static stretching. So next body area, as we close up around the hip and thigh, or this area is called the, the posterior gluteus media. So different fibers in the glute um, 
glute medius specifically, anterior fibers that are slightly forward here towards the front side of that lateral aspect of the hip, and then posterior fibers that are just behind. A lot of my runners typically, as they increase mileage, start to complain of um, this little ache or this little tightness in this area. So this is how we work on improving flexibility, moving those muscles throughout the range of motion if you're consistently going through this in the sagittal plane or, or forward motion, okay? So the exercise itself for the mobility drill is called the cross behind lunge. Um, looks very, fairly simple, but notice a lot of people really struggle to get into this position, especially if, if you have tightness, because it, it does target both sides to some degree, and this is a very problematic area for a lot of people. So I'm gonna show you again, facing this way, assisted first, just like I talked about in the lateral squat previous, previously. If you wanna hold on to something, so if I'm at home, I wanna hold on to the sink, inside the door jam, uh, a table of some kind just to support myself. I can go into that position assisted, holding on to something just to help me really get a nice big step as I wrap that leg around and then lower down, okay? But here, obviously, because I'm at the gym, TRX is a very good tool to help get into that position. So just so you can see, especially from behind, you should be able to appreciate the, the position a lot better. I'm gonna line up my leg that I'm balancing on right with the anchor strap of the TRX. I'm gonna take a nice big step around, make sure my knee of the leg I'm balancing on is pointing straight ahead, and then I'm gonna sink down towards the ground. So I'm actually using those straps to assist me somewhat to control my lowering down towards the ground, and it's actually this side right here. You can see as I get there, as I come around, we got that little bit of rotation or tilt throughout the, the, the pelvis. This side is what I feel a really big stretch on as I get down to the bottom. So I would do that on both sides just to check and see, depending on which one is tighter, and then come back up. You really need to make sure you take a big step. If you step too small, there's not much room and you can't get down low. So taking a nice long step and lowering is really ideal to get into that position the best. From there, once you have the movement down, you can get fairly low to the ground, just like the lateral squat once again, going to the unassisted version. So I would work on a cross behind lunge here, no support, not holding on to a TRX or countertop or anything like that. And all I would do is big step around, and that's the first step to get into this slightly lengthened position, but it's that lowering aspect of the movement that then puts that posterior glute med throughout a greater stretch. So I would do that on both sides. Again, just checking. Fairly tricky at some time, some points here to get into this position if you're new to this exercise, but that is a very good exercise to help work on improving flexibility through that posterior glute med without adding in your typical crossover uh, stretches, can pigeon, some of those things that really target this area in a more active way. The final area we're gonna look at today on how to improve lower extremity flexibility without static stretching is the calf. And calf comprised of these few muscles down here at the lower leg, gastroc, soleus. We have a couple of deep flexors underneath that. Um, very common area that people want to sit there and really work on and stretch from a flexibility standpoint. Um, still like those stretches to some degree, but can at a certain point, we have to work on building strength and resilience throughout the entire range of motion as you're controlling that muscle from a shortened muscle to a lengthened muscle. So very simple on this one. It's something uh, people are, are almost doing. So it's a very uh, easy mobility drill to implement in there. It's pretty seamless. Is a calf raise from a deficit. So not looking for tons of repetitions, more so looking at can I control that calf from a shortened position at the top of that calf raise to a lengthened position as I lower down. In this instance, we're gonna use a plate here. Uh, always recommend starting fairly low as far as the height of the plate. You can use a stair at home, a curb if you're on the street about to go out to a run, um, or sometimes actually you can actually lean forward here. Obviously I don't have the space for it, but if you start with the heels down, we're in that lengthened position, and then I can go through the motion like that as well. Nice, slow, and controlled as you go through this one. So if we're starting at the top, again, gastroc, soleus, calf muscles are in a shortened position, slowly lowering down as that heel, those heels come down to the ground and then coming back up. So getting that stretch, the elongation through those muscles at the very bottom of this. So this is fairly easy for me. I probably would try to go a little bit higher as far as the plate, but I wanna to get to the point where I'm forcing it where I, I can't get all the way down to, the, to that ground. I wanna have some kind of low point for my heels to touch to and then come back up. It's not about cranking on the joints and the muscles here, but just comfortably controlling throughout that range of motion. So if you're working on some kind of calf 
foam rolling, uh, static stretching. This would be a great addition on, on really putting that calf and moving it throughout its range of motion just to help it just improve flexibility throughout the whole range rather than sitting there and aimlessly cranking on the muscles um, to get that increased flexibility. Okay guys, there you have it. There are five lower extremity mobility drills to improve flexibility without static stretching. Definitely highly recommend you look through these videos a couple times, get a better appreciation on how you can lengthen throughout that range of motion rather than just consistently working on your static stretching if you're someone that lacks range of motion or if you're someone that just constantly feels this, this nagging tightness in certain muscles and following activity or just throughout the day, okay? It's very important to make sure we're not just cranking and stretching these muscles, but building strength and resilience throughout the range of motion. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out. We'd love to help get you on a program to help you see better and more reliable results when it comes to flexibility and just pain-free movement. And I hope you found value in this video series. Thank you.